show's off-road rig is Skippy from Brisbane and his 2008 H3 Hummer. It's a 2008 model H3 Hummer Luxury. It's a luxury because you get the leather seats, auto and the sunroof. I like the Hummers because they're different. The appearance of them, it's just a completely different car. There's not many of them out off-roading. Up front there's an ARB steel bar with an air outlet. There's a Safari snorkel uh, attached to help breathe when water crossings. Yeah, I made up the roof bar because um, you know, there wasn't many around that would sit forward of the sunroof um, before we had the, the, the roof rack. On the roof bar we've, we've got the IPF 9000s and uh, flashing lights for going on site during the week when we're not playing in the mud. On the roof rack we normally throw the, the instant shade for, for day trips. The rock sliders are an OEM factory uh, option. They're very sturdy for um, rock climbing. Uh, on the rear here we have the ARB steel bar just to add a little bit more protection when going into the gullies. But on the ARB bar they've, they've actually uh, maintained the standard hitching points of the D shackle. Work on the first Hummer, the H1, started in 1979. Originally conceived as a multi-purpose military vehicle, the Hummer has since then been further developed for the civilian market. Whilst the longer, wider and much heavier H1s and H2s are available in the United States, it was the H3 that landed on Australian shores in 2007. And while sporting many traditional Hummer design traits, it's the H3 which is far more suited to the Australian bush. It's a five cylinder, 3.7 litre, 180 kilowatts. We've uh, increased the air flow capacity with the air dock system, which is from America. Uh, the air dock system takes out the resonator, and so it's a straight through system that force feeds air into the engine. The air dock system, along with the Safari snorkel and the k &N filter, increases horsepower whilst giving you a better fuel economy. Under the bonnet, there's also the dual battery from Piranha with the isolator. Also under the bonnet is an ARB compressor, which feeds into an airbag man tank that also feeds into the rear airbags. Being the narrowest out of all three Hummer models, the H3 certainly has no problem navigating its way around the Australian bush. It's our tight tracks and windy roads that the H3 is very well suited to. And Skippy's Hummer is no exception. It's set up very well for a fun day out on the tracks. It's a four-speed automatic and the transfer case is electronically switched on the dash. All the drive shafts are standard. The only option that we have is the front and rear ARB air lockers. The four-inch Rancho lift kit put on it with the in-cab shock adjusters. In the Rancho kit, it comes with all the drop arms, all the components to drop the diffs down and extend the uprights. The Rancho kit is a complete bolt-on kit. The only thing you have to do is you have to get new rims because of the offset. By putting the Rancho lift kit on, it doesn't change the ride or, or the drive of the car. It just allows you to do a lot more um, serious off-roading. In the rear of the car, the, the Rancho kit comes with a new set of leaf springs and the adjustable shocks. All up, the Rancho kit gives the Hummer a four inch lift all round. I asked a mate of mine to put something together and this is what he came up with for the rear diff protector. It's pretty unique and it does a really good job of protecting the diff from, from nasty rocks. The airbag system allows you to raise and lower the car with the touch of a button inside the cab, it runs off the nine litre tank that's underneath the car. The wheels that we have are a moto metal skull. They were released last year at SEMA and were imported to the country by the wheel boys on the Gold Coast. At the moment, I've got the Mickey Thompson MTZ in a 33. Maybe later on down the track, we can go up to the 35. With all the modifications that require switches, we've put it all together in a nice, neat, control panel which is easily accessible whilst driving. On the one control panel you can control the compressor, the air lockers, the flashing lights, 
the air horn, the air shocks, the airbags, and there's a spare switch. I've put it where it is so that it's easily accessible for the driver, so everything can be done on the run. Also inside we have the gauges for the shocks, we have a UHF, the battery gauge, the thermometer for the fridge. We've also installed a rear camera which sits on the dash. In the back we've got the Black Widow drawers for storing all our bits and pieces. We've got the Ingle fridge and the Black Widow fridge slide. Uh, I made this modification into the back door so that we could do some serving of drinks or making lunches when we're out and about. And housed inside the door itself we've got a 2400 watt inverter. A 2400 watt inverter allows you to almost run anything including power tools. What drew me to Hummers is just it being a different vehicle. It's not a patrol, it's not a Hilux, it's just something different. For what you get, for what you pay for, they're pretty good. Very comfortable inside, whilst also having the ability to go off-road. The whole family can go with us. Like most four-wheel drives, lockers, tyres, suspension and drivers make a difference. The transformer stickers are on the side because it turns into an animal off-road. <laughs> Good thing it's bright red, Skip, and we can see it coming a mile away. And don't forget to check out our new online store. By buying one of the t-shirts, you're supporting the Off-Road Show, and we can keep bringing it to you. So check it out at theoffroadshow.com and click store. Thanks for watching, Off-Roaders.